All right. Well, welcome to our webinar all about finding, applying for, and winning K-12 through school grants. Um, my name is Maggie. I'm the creative director here at Get Movin'. Uh, in the course of my career, I've worked with different companies and nonprofit organizations that have um, applied for and sometimes won grants. So I do have experience there, um, but I'm also the one who manages uh, the grants here at Get Moving. So we do an annual grant um, in different awards and competitions, but I um, am often in charge of processing those applications, um, reviewing them. Um, so I know what helps the school stand out and what helps uh, schools win grants, and so I'm here to share that knowledge with all of you. All right, so uh, this might be a, a bit of overview, so I'm not going to spend too much time here, but I did want to touch on how a grant differs from fundraising. So first off, grants tend to be larger dollar amounts, um, and they are awarded for special projects from a single organization. Uh, whereas fundraising dollars, as we know, they're made up of many smaller donations um, from individuals, and this money can be spent on needs um, identified by your organization. So this is important to differentiate because when you're applying for grants, you're appealing to an entire organization and not an individual uh, donor. So the strategy there is a bit different, and we're going to talk more about that. Um, depending on the grant, there may, may be more uh, control and limitations around how you can use the money. So this isn't always the case, um, but it is something that's good to be aware of. Uh, funds raised by your own event are obviously at your discretion for how you use them. And then there's timelines. So if you need the money sooner rather than later, grants can take anywhere from a few months up to a year to process, review, and make a final decision. Um, the exception here, I would say, would be like local grants. Uh, so we are going to talk about those, or oftentimes they're called community grants. They will often have a quicker turnaround. Um, fundraising, on the other hand, it can begin whenever you decide and complete it in you know, as little as a month if you're really putting the fire on. Um, but don't think that they have to be mutually exclusive. Uh, you could absolutely have a fundraising committee and a grant committee, or maybe that's even the same person who's in charge of both of those. Um, and you can have your fundraising events and then also be applying for grants throughout the year. Um, I would recommend just on the amount of grants there are to try to put in like 10 applications a year. Um, once you do one, it's really easy to tailor and adjust that to, um, to uh, any, any grant. So now let's talk about the types of grants. So there are millions of dollars in educational grants across the country, and this creates a huge opportunity, which is on one hand very exciting, and then on the other hand very overwhelming. So this is just a great place to start. It's a quick breakdown of the different categories of grants for K through 12 schools. Um, first off, you have, of course, your federal grants. Um, they're provided by the government. Um, and they aim to support initiatives more at like the national level. So it, it might be more distributed to like school districts rather than individual schools. However, there are exceptions to that in terms of like Title I grants, um, IDEA grants for special education, there's um, grants for after school activities, uh, healthy food in the cafeteria, that type of thing. If the if the government is putting on an initiative or they they have a focus on something, a lot of times that will translate into grant money. So currently, the big focus has been on mental health in schools. So if you have a program or something that you're trying to get off the ground that kind of addresses that issue, there might might be federal grant dollars that you can access. Then we have our state grants. So state grants um, offer support, of course, to schools within the state. Um, and these do not have to be like public schools, like uh, charters, private schools are also eligible for state as well as federal grants. But that's sometimes a misconception that it's only for public schools. Um, and these grants can focus on various educational areas, uh, professional development, technology integration, that sort of thing. 
Then we have our foundation grants. So these will be coming from like a private foundation. Um, sometimes it's from a family that has the means to provide a grant for a school, which would often be in their community. So this is a little bit more local. Um, however, there are foundations that do grants on a national level as well. Um, and they can cover a wide range of areas from STEM education to arts programs to uh, environmental initiatives, that sorts of thing. Uh, then you have corporate grants. So these are like our, our big box businesses that might have a philanthropic arm um, and they offer grants to support education um, in different areas of interest as well. Um, a lot of times they will provide grants in areas where they actually have um, like a brick and mortar business. Um, that's sometimes a specification that they have. Then we have our community grants. So these, I would say, are the hot ticket for schools because, right, you want to be a big fish in a little pond. So as much as we can limit sort of the competition for the grant, the better. Um, and anything hyper local is going to make that grant pool a lot smaller. Um, so these grants might come from local organizations, from community groups, businesses, um, and they're going to focus on you know, a whole range of things, but it can often include scholarships as well for students, if that's something you're looking for. Uh, then we have our nonprofit grants. It's exactly what it sounds like. These are nonprofits, educational associations, advocacy groups. Um, and the good thing to remember here is um, they're really aimed at addressing social issues. So it's important if you're, you know, applying for a grant to do a bit of research into the grant um, organization, you know, to put them in a category. Is it a foundation? Is it a community, you know, organization? Is it a nonprofit? Um, and do a little background research on them so that you can sort of address their mission and their focus in your proposal. Then the next three, technology, project, and innovation, these are more about what you're trying to fund. Um, and it's just good to use these keywords when you're looking for grants. So that's why I put them in here. Um, technology grants, it's, it's you know, supplying the money or the actual devices or software for what you're trying to do in your school. Like if you're trying to do commute, um, computer and like math stations or something like that. Um, Project-based grants, this is the category I would put our Get Move-In grant into. Um, so these are designed to fund specific projects or programs. Um, you know, say you want to create an outdoor learning center or something like that. You know, it's something specific and not ne necessarily your entire budget that you're trying to get funded. Then we have innovation grants. Um, these are particular, like if you come from like a specialty school, you might be eligible for more of an innovation grant. If your school is doing something different um, or if you're trying to start a new project or program that embraces some new curriculum or teaching methods or something like that, um, you should really look into what innovation grants are available um, in your area or just, you know, on a national level as well. Lastly, we have matching grants, um, and this is uh, similar to actually a feature we have in our fundraising platform called FundHub. Um, so shameless little plug here, we offer employer match, um, which means when parents, you know, donate, they can also connect to maybe the company they work for and see if they offer a, a matching grant or donation program. Um, and a lot of our schools like double the amount of donations they bring in through this feature. Um, so matching grant is very similar. It requires a school to secure part of the funding themselves and then the grant provides matching funds for your group or school. All right so now that we know about the types of grants we want to talk about how do we actually find grants for the current school year that you're eligible for. So the internet is just packed with what I would call ghost grants. Um, this just means there's so much information out there where the grant is like years old, but the web page is still up. So you can spend a lot of time, waste a lot of time going through all of those ghost grants just to find out like, oh, the application closed, you know, months ago or years ago or something. So, um, you know, having a strategy for sourcing your grants, I think, is very important. Um, and 
what I would say is the first sort of tip is just to start small and then branch out. So I would begin with a local search of grants in your community, um, you know, using your zip code, your state, your town, um, and then talking about, you know, how are you kind of defining the type of grant or maybe your type of school, something like that. And then I would always include the year as well. So 2023 um, or just filter those results. You're not getting those like ghost grants popping up. Um, and then that brings us to the next way to source grants, and that's by narrowing down opportunities uh, based on the type of project or program you need to fund. So examples include STEM grants, health and wellness grants, um, grants specific to, to teachers, uh, technology playground grants also exist. Um, so you really want to talk about like what is your school need um, and how can you categorize this in a way that helps you source grants to fund it. And then once you have your category, it's a lot easier to find those local, uh, state level, even nationwide grants that are specific to your funding need. So I do have on here screenshot this page, but again, you're going to get all of this later, so you don't necessarily have to. That's just if you're like motivated after this presentation and you want to go on and start your grant search right away. Um, these would be a great place to start. Um, just grants.gov is also probably my top just because that really helps you find like every type of grant and it lets you track your grant as well. So once you apply, you can actually see, you know, where it is in the grant review process. So these are all great resources for finding grants. All right. Uh, another uh, time saver, just because I know we're all so busy, is to do a Google alert. So this is just something I do when I'm looking for um, grants for the upcoming school year when I'm putting that grant guide together, um, because um, I don't want to spend so much time just digging through databases and compiling lists and then discovering, you know, not even eligible for half of these, that type of thing. Um, just set up a Google alert, uh, create your query with, you know, the keywords that are specific to your school and what you're trying to fund, um, configure your alert. So, you know, set up like the cadence, you know, when do you want to receive emails? Do you only want to receive news articles, that type of thing? Um, you can also pick your region or location if you want to only find stuff specific to, to where your school is actually located. Um, and then you just create the alert and then it's it's a passive way of finding new grants, um, you know, without having to actually dedicate too much time to it. Alrighty, so we talked a lot about finding grants and now we want to, of course, apply and win, for the, win those grants. Um, so the next step um, talks about just basically you know, the basics, you want to make sure you have all of your facts straight, of course. You want to make sure you have a contact person, so that's often the person filling out the grant. Um, but if you want it to be somebody else, just make sure you have that info on hand. Um, and then another good tip to save time is to just have, if if you have your 501c3 number, um, to establish yourself as, as a nonprofit. Um, and then another great way to save time is to prepare your essential documents. So these are is your budget, uh, your project plan, and any other like visuals like photographs or actual graphs or video, perhaps, if, if that's applicable. Um, not every grant application is going to re require these items, but it is a good idea, especially if you're trying to um, fund a project or a program. It's a good idea to have, you know, a budget and a project plan regardless, whether that's just for your team or for your, you know, your board or admin or what. So these are just some tips for this part of the application. Um, for your budget, uh, you want it to be clear, you know, comprehensive. Uh, you're basically just stating what are the expenses associated with your project. Um, again, if it's not a project, I would just break this down for like your overall budget, like where are the funds going? Um, this is just very compelling for any donor. So on FundHub, we actually have a visual pie chart that schools can use to show uh, parents and donors where the funds are going so that, um, you know, they they know specifically like, oh, my, my money is going to go support a new, you know, new playground equipment or something. 
Um, so same same with the budget uh, grant budget. You want to be specific on how those funds are going to be used. Then um, your project plan, um, which could just be you know your proposal or just the actual application you're filling out. Um, but you want to plan. You want to be able to state what are your objectives, um, what's your timeline. You know when are these funds going to be used realistically. Um, Another good thing to focus on is like, is there a way that you can evaluate um, the success of your project or your program? Because um, a lot of times, especially if it's a bigger grant, they want a way to measure the success. Um, so they want to sort of have a recap, you know, whatever point that is to see, OK, did these grant dollars actually do what you said they would do via this program? So it's just something to keep in mind. Um, again, it's oftentimes not necessarily required, um, but sometimes it is depending on the grant. Um, additionally, um, you know, I would say get some feedback and some collaboration with other people in your school. Um, it, it might not always be necessary, but I think especially, you know, if you can have, you know, the buy-in from your principal or your admin or, you know, your educators, I think getting their um, presentation or their, um, sorry, I just read the chat. Yes, uh, Ms. Jones, the presentation will be will be emailed. Um, but just collaborating with other people in your in your school will be helpful. And definitely having your financial officer look over your numbers. By the way, always make sure if you're including a budget, if you're including numbers, make sure your math works out because it's an easy way to get dismissed if it doesn't. Okay, so this just goes more into sort of the essential checklist for applying to any type of grant. Like I said at the beginning, I tried to make this pretty general so it would apply to um, any of those 10 types of grants you might be applying for. Um, so you want to clearly state your goals. Um, you do want to demonstrate somewhat of a need, right? So there might not be like a direct like, you know, there was a natural disaster or something like that, but you might have a need in your school and you just want to show how the funding is going to help meet that need. Um, you want to be specific and detailed about your project and its impact. Um, again, you want to address evaluation. So if there's going to be a way to measure the success. Um, you want to be authentic and passionate. I mean, most of you are, you know, if we're volunteering for a school, we're already pretty passionate. Um, but without getting away from sort of the core point of your proposal, uh, you do want to show how, you know, the impact the grant dollars are going to have for students in your community. Um, and then lastly, and this is super important, is to tailor your proposal. So you want to make sure that your proposal is customized to match the objectives and the priorities of the granting organization. Um, so again, this goes back to figuring out which of those 10 types you kind of fit in that grant, uh, those categories, I mean, um, and making sure that you're like aligning with the granting organization. So basically they have like a stake in the game and your success becomes their success as well. And we're going to talk about that more on this slide here. So this is more about how to stand out. So before that was just kind of the essentials, like that's just kind of getting you in the door. Now these things are about how to stand out and actually hopefully win the grant you're applying for. Um, so first, the most compelling proposals um, combine hard data with heartfelt story. So an example of this is you might write in your proposal, you know, 10%, so that's a that's a piece of hard data, um, and this might come from research that you didn't necessarily have to do. You know, your district might have published some research article or something came out that gives some percentage about something. Um, but say it's about like health and wellness for your students. So like 10% of our school community, you know, faces some type of malnutrition from lack of access to fresh fruits and veggies. So what we want to do is we want to take the grant money from your organization and put it into a school-wide garden and like greenhouse program so we can teach kids, you know, what it means to, to grow and eat healthy food. Um, so, you know, by by providing that funding, you're helping 
XX and X, right? It's inviting them to the party. That's kind of the next point there. So combining your hard data with your heartfelt and then including the organization. So you want to lay it out similar to a math problem. Your organization plus our school program or whatever we're funding equals this great result. So another example here could be, you know, the funds from your tech company plus our new computer stations equals more opportunities for students to enter into the STEM workforce. Um, you know, it's it's OK to kind of paint the picture for them um, and to kind of dream big in your proposal. Like you you do want to inspire um, whoever is reading this that like, hey, yeah, like we do want to be a part of that. Um, and so that's what really makes you stand out. Um, the bottom two here are more <laughs> practical. Again, double check your numbers, um, especially, you know, if you are providing a budget um, and then just following directions. So if if they are saying like, hey, we want a separate proposal. Um, so it's kind of like when you're applying for a job, you know, sometimes you'll fill out the application, but then you have to do a cover letter. Um, it, some grant applications are kind of the same way where you have to send separate documents and you just want to make sure in that instance that you're having somebody read over, making sure you have proper margins, et cetera, all that kind of boring stuff. But it is important uh, for grant applications because the person going through the applications are trying to narrow down the pool. So if you do a simple mistake, it's going to be an easy out the door. Alrighty, so that was a lot of information very fast. Um, I am going to take questions shortly, but I do first want to promote the grant that we have here at Get Moving. Um, so this is our second annual Dream Team grant. We just kicked this off last year um, with a $3,000 grant, and that went to Kincaid Elementary. Um, that funded a STEM night for the families and their community. Um, and this year we're going even bigger with $3,500 for um, you know, a parent group, a booster club, principal, teacher, um, you know, anybody can really apply um, as long as you are a K through 12 educational institution in the USA. Uh, you don't have to be a client of ours. It's open to anyone. Uh, so the deadline is the 1st of December and here's the URL to go and apply. And it is currently open for applications as well. And then this is just a picture of the grant guide you're going to get. Um, it's pretty extensive. It covers a lot um, of what I just talked about. Um, and then it does have um, specific, it has over 30 plus um, like opportunities for this school year. So I've tried to do a lot of the work for you. There's literally you click a button and it will go to the application or just like more information about it. So expect to get that as well as the recording of this presentation uh, by Friday at the latest. Um, and now I will go ahead and open it up if we have any questions. And go ahead and just put those in the chat. Thank you. Yeah, the, the grant guide, um, it's not just, I mean, I want to obviously anyone who's in this presentation is interested in grants, we're sending it, um, but it is available to anybody. So if you wanna share that, um, I will, you know, that the URL, they just have to fill out the form and then it goes right to the grant guide. So any, if you have any other schools or any other teammates that you wanna share that with, feel free. OK, so that's a great question. Uh, Sasha asked, you know, if you're looking for funds to do kind of a bigger project, so something that, you know, is going to take a big chunk of money um, and you're looking at grants and you're thinking like, well, even if we won several of these, you know, it wouldn't necessarily cover it. Can we apply for multiple to cover more of the cost? I would say that comes down to breaking down your budget. So if you, for instance, have some of it already funded and you're just trying to, um, you know, cover a different chunk of it, I would just be very, you know, honest about that in your proposal. Um, and a lot of times what's great is grant organizations want to see that you've already put a little bit of um, um, work into it. Um, and so if you can sit, show that like, hey, we've laid the foundation for this big project, now we need you to help us take us over the, the finish line, um, 
that's that's great. Like that works in your favor. Um, so I would say absolutely you can you should be able to apply for multiple grants to fund a single project um, unless there's any stipulations in a grant that says we need to be the only one like associated with this. But that would probably be more just for like maybe a foundation grant or something like that. But that would be in the minority. Let's see, I'm just going through. Yeah, so Aliana, for the for the form, is that for um, the grant guide is just this. I'll put. There's that and then the dream team, I'll put that in here as well in case you want to just go right there. Um, OK, so let's see um, various grant opportunities again. Um, is that like the type of grant, Stubra, is that what you're referring to? And I think you can actually go through this on your own. I don't think you have to wait for me to go through if you want to just go through this, but you will. Um, again, you will get the recording for this. Uh, this is the databases. Um, and then these were the categories here. Um, nonprofits that are not schools. Yeah, so Kelsey, um, that's a great question. So get moving, uh, just like a little bit more about us as a company. So we do work primarily with schools. Um, however, the fundraising platform that we've built up called FundHub, um, it really can work for any type of nonprofit looking to host an event-based fundraiser. Um, so you say you're part of a gymnastics facility. Um, I think absolutely you could work with us. Um, what's great is if you have... Um, you know, maybe the, the kids, a part of the gymnastics, they get their own page, um, their own fundraising web page, and then they get to share that um, on social media, text, email, and get um, get donations to meet kind of your overall fundraising goal. Um, but yes, to, to answer your question, we, we don't just work with schools. That's just primarily who we work with. So Karen asks, any tips for collecting corporate matches? Um, yeah, so... I would say tips for that is one thing that we provide for our clients is we have what we it's called an event toolbox. Um, and in there we have over a hundred um, different like templates and documents um, for schools to use. And one of them in there is a, um, I believe like an employer match um, kind of templated letter um, that parents can use to send to their, um, you know, their, their businesses that they work for um, to try to get those employee match dollars. Um, if you're, you're saying that you have 15 parents, say they have it, so that means that the business they work for does corporate matches, um, but only receive one or two. I think making sure that um, what you give the parents to give to the corporation needs to look very legit and professional, and that's why using something like a template like we provide, I think, is important um, to get them connected in that way. Median household income play a role in getting grants. Um, David, do you mean for like the people, like if you're talking about from a school, like are you talking about the medium household income for like the families in your school? Like if you're more of a Title I or something like that. Oh, great, Christine. You're welcome. Yeah. So, David. Um. Yeah. So that's that's kind of asking, like, you know, when you're applying, um, you know, does a Title One school have a better shot because of the median household income? Um, I would say it depends on the grant, um, and not necessarily. So it it depends on what you're going to emphasize. Um. So if you do come from a, a high Title One kind of more lower income families, um, and you want to present that as a, as a real need, um, I think then you just need to connect that with what are you trying to get funded, right? It's like you're presenting the need, but then you immediately need to say 
so this grant is going to help us do X, Y, and Z. Um, and so it's it's not necessarily like, oh, we're only going to look at, at grant applications where the median income household is below this number or something like that. Um, I would say if you're looking more at like the state grants or the um, federal grants, there might be more of of that that you're looking at. Um, but I think if you're coming from like an individual school, it shouldn't impact you that much. All right, well, we are right at two o'clock, so I'm gonna go ahead and end the recording here. Um, like I said, you're gonna go ahead and get this entire recorded presentation in your email, email box uh, shortly uh, by Friday at the latest, and it's also going to include uh, the PDF grant guide for you guys. Um, thank you so much for, for being a part of this. Um, if you want to um, go ahead and, and comment on like our Facebook or anything like that, leave us a review for this. Um, it helps us, uh, we're, we're looking to maybe do a little bit more of these throughout the year. Um, and so if you have topics that you're interested in, uh, please message anything like that. Uh, you know, we're here. We have an amazing platform, but we also have an amazing amount of knowledge. Uh, and we really want to share that with you guys. So uh, thank you so much uh, and good luck in your, your grant applications. And uh, we will we'll talk later. Thank you.